Good evening, ladies as well as gentlemen, Papa Boris here, playing some more Pathfinder Adventures, and uh, hopefully we're going to survive all the horrific, horrific bugs currently existing in the game and make it through these last couple of scenarios. Now, this scenario, Assault on the Pinnacle, is the second to last scenario of the entire campaign, and honestly, it's not really all that weird. Whenever you defeat a Bane, you pick a card type other than loot, and then you basically add that add a random card of that type to a rewards pile and in the scenario as a reward you get all the cards that are in the rewards pile so here it is when you defeat a bane pick a type of boon and add it to the reward pile and if you win you get one pretty cool loot sword and then also all the cards that you picked up our villain here is honestly pretty straightforward just 24 32 combat check with some stuff that doesn't matter too much we got Kalib, who's pretty nifty but at the end of the day it's just you know a bunch of damage before the combat check and by this point a combat check of 20 isn't even that bad and then we got this thing which um, is pretty much just a vanilla 23 and a bunch of these guys whom we have seen before they're pretty annoying but they just pretty much just deal damage before the check and then it's a you know 23 combat check to win all right now even the locations aren't actually that weird a lot of the locations are things that we've seen a bunch of times we do, however, have the Lang device, which is a pretty interesting one. It has six monsters and three blessings. And when you end your turn there, you remove 1d4 markers from the location. It starts with 12, and when the last one is removed, you summon and encounter the thing from beyond time. Now, I'm not going to mess around with the vault because I don't want this game to crash. I forget if that thing can be evaded or not. Uh, but I believe it's like a 30-30-30 combat check or something ridiculous like that. So you really don't want to trigger that thing if you can possibly avoid it. And then the check to close is a Knowledge or Arcane 14 check. Now, if they'd made this Knowledge check, I would have finally felt special about having, you know, Ezrin with his amazing Knowledge. But Arcane means that, you know, Sioni and Alem, basically all the, all the Arcane people in the game are just fine closing it as long as they get, like, a blessing. Then we have the Rune Well, which has no monsters in it. And it automatically closes. It does have a pretty annoying at this location effect, which is that when you start your turn there, you bury a card. So on the one hand, Amiri is obviously excellent for this because she can, um, you know, leave at the end of her turn and not start her turn there. But on the other hand, there's no monsters here, so Amiri is kind of not good for that purpose. Uh, so what we can do is you can, for example, have Sila go here, explore, and then uh, do her end of turn scouting, which is guaranteed to give her a free extra explore because there's no monsters here besides the henchmen. And then Amiri pulls her away, and then Sila can do her start of turn scouting elsewhere. So I'm probably going to do that. Uh, I don't want to start there, of course, with her. I'm going to move there after I start. So we'll just start her, you know, at some random place, like there. We'll put Ezrin there as well because that is actually his jam. And Amiri there as well because maybe Amiri wants to give Sila a weapon. Then Linny, I guess, will do her thing at the temple. And Maurizio, we'll just put her... I mean, Maurizio's good there. Um, as long as she gets Crown of Charisma. She's good there if she gets Crown of Charisma. She's good here because she can um, evade the bandit henchmen. So there's uh, quite a few places where she can be pretty good. I guess we'll start there. It's an annoying place, the guard tower. And then, you know, we'll move away once, she, once we get the Crown of Charisma. And then Harsk... Uh, Harsk doesn't really have any good place to go, honestly, because he's not good at charisma. I don't think he... Uh, does he have the crown of charisma? Did I give him the crown? I don't, I don't remember. I could have him go here and bury cards um, with a survival 7. I mean, his survival is like D6 plus 4. Or D6 plus 3 if he's one of the characters who lost a skill feat. So you'll he'll lose cards most of the time. I guess we'll just start him right there, too. Uh, that's kind of like the safe place for everybody to be. Um... Eh, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, whatever, we'll just stick him somewhere. He, he's, he can scout at the end of his turn, so he'll just hang out at a place that he's not good at, and then, you know, if he sees the henchman coming, then he'll leave. Unless, of course, the henchman is the top card, in which case, oh well, we'll just spend the blessings needed to get his d4 up to a charisma of 6. Alright, so uh, Amiri's got a couple of weapons. Sila has a weapon as well, and an augury. Alright, so Sila, hmm. You know, everyone with an augury, I really should have had him start at this, uh, what is it, at this Lang device, because obviously with all the monsters there, it's a good place to cast it. Anybody got scrying by any chance? No, I got augury here. Ezrin really wants to stay at the Thessalonian dungeon, though, so what I'm going to do here is with Sila, we will we will just hop over here. Wait, no, it's Amiri's turn. Amiri! <laughs> 
with a Miri. Ah, oh, goodness. Well, we're going to go here, right? Yeah. No, I don't want to go there because there's no monsters there. Damn it. All right. Miri's going to go to the mountain peak, I guess. She's pretty good at closing it. There's monsters there and she can leave, which is all good and well. Let's go ahead. Hey, it's the villain. Shoot. That's annoying. So it would have been nice to scout that. And leave the villain there and have a really easy scenario. Unfortunately, that's not how it's going to be. Now, that's not all bad because Amiri can handle this for sure. Um, it just kind of sucks that uh, basically, you know, we could have had a really easy scenario if we had scouted the villain. But instead, we're going to have, you know, just, I mean, it's still fine. I'm not going to spend any resources here. We're just going to roll a d8 and fail. Nice. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it just would have been really trivial. Instead, it's just going to be, you know, pretty good. Uh, there's no point for Harsk to even try to close that because he can't without help. And I don't want to help. I don't care enough about it. So we'll just auto-succeed at closing the Thessalonian dungeon. Wow, first card. First card, the villain. Well, it's going to happen. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on a minute. I can actually evade. Oh, that's interesting. Then I know the villain's in the mountain. But yeah, that's worth it. That's totally worth it. So uh, what is this? You may not play the... <laughs> You may not play this card during an encounter. It's letting me play the card. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tempt fate here by dealing with that. We're gonna go ahead and discard those. And I'm gonna keep the armor because actually this doesn't help. There's nothing that deals fire. I'm gonna discard that. And we're gonna run to the temple. Whoop. And so now obviously it stinks because the the villain is um somewhere in the mountain peak, not at the top anymore. Oh, that's nasty. Oh, God, this is, like, the worst thing. Okay, well, that's that that just blows dicks. Um, we'll leave that alone for now, though. Let's go over here to the Ling device, and we're going to cast Augury there. I mean, pretty decent odds of finding three monsters with this. Um, you know, I actually, I mean, probably getting all three is tough, but almost a certainty that you'll get at least two. All right, and we'll recharge this augury. I will flip a card here. In a six-player game where you have so many, where you have so few turns, it's just worth it to flip extra cards to keep your key cards going. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and explore here. Ah, oh, we even got a blessing. Nice. All right, so here I think it would be pretty nice to get some extra explorers going. So I'll go ahead and discard that. All right, we got a henchman. Very good. So this is pretty. The, these these guys are pretty tame. It's just one damage for failing this fortitude check, so I don't really mind. Uh, unfortunately, this is only combat damage. Survival at the mountain peak. There is survival, but that the mountain peak is with the villain, so I don't think I actually need this lizard. So we'll discard that. And here's our combat 23. So we'll do. Da -da -da. Oh shit! You know what sucks? Uh, this actually really sucks. Because now Scylla has to make an Arcane 14 check to close this place. And her intelligence is a D6. Well, we're, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're just going to make it happen. So, let's see what's going on here. we got a plus 9. Harsh can... Uh, I don't actually want to get rid of my... Um, Sahedrin Medallion, because it does block some damage. But we'll get rid of the armor there. So, let's see. I need a 12... 12, yeah, we'll throw a blessing down here. Let's get the Saren Ray going for another D8. Okay, so I need a 12. I'm throwing six dice. Yeah, this should be fine. All right, so we do this. And now we get a reward at the end of the scenario. So I'm not sure. I guess we'll just go for weapons, try to get some of those juicy, juicy... Hello? Okay, I'm tapping on this thing, and it's it's not doing anything. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, well, um, hmm... I tapped spell, and then my weapon went through. I don't know what's going on there. Well, let's try closing this place, see how it goes. I mean, Scylla does get to flip a card. Now, we're looking for intelligence blessings and location closing blessings. Ooh, aid, perfect. Now, we can get phrasma blessings as well. What is this? Torag, unfortunately, not the one. Mm, what is this one? Shellen, that's wisdom. Nope. Man, did not get lucky here with my blessings none of the right ones i'll say blessing of the gods just in case i don't think i'm gonna need this blessing of air still so let's see i need to roll 12 so rolling five dice when most of them are d4s is probably not smart rolling six dice when a lot of them are d4s is still a, a touch loose just a touch 
So we're going to spend one more blessing here. I guess this blessing of the gods is going to have to do it. Just to make sure this closes. Because not... Oh, wow. Every single die made a difference there. Not closing that would have really sucked. It would have mean, meant that somebody had... To, basically, Ezrin had to be on temp close duty at that place all the time. And that's just annoying. All right. So now I have to make a... Actually, yeah. The seal is turned still. Never mind. We'll just keep on going. All right. So now Ezrin's up. And what do we have over here? We have the zombie horde. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to augury for monsters. I could do augury for barriers and put the zombie horde on the bottom, but I didn't want to find a henchman there and then, um, you know, have the have the henchman get shuffled away because I named barrier. Of course, it didn't work out because I didn't find the henchman. I didn't find any monsters, in fact. And as a result, I, uh, you know, I shuffled the deck so the barrier's not on top, but it's still not ideal because... Uh, the barriers in there somewhere. I did pick up scrying, so I'm gonna go ahead and cast scrying. And I'm gonna scry the mountain peak and try to find the villain. 3 in 10 chance, 30% chance, not super high odds. Well, I didn't find the villain, but it was still good because I got two of the three monsters, so now there's only eight cards left to explore through, which is pretty good. And we're gonna recharge scrying. I gotta watch out for Ezrin's hand size here. All right, no, that's nice. I hope I find a monster with Bewilder. That'd be very nice. Um, because right now I'm already at 10 cards and my hand size is nine. If I find a monster, I can use some cards, obviously, and I can explore with the Clockwork Librarian. But um, I don't think I want to draw a card from the dungeon at the moment. Let's go ahead and explore Guide to the Beyond. This is not a magical item. Reveal to add two to your check to acquire a boon that has the discard oh man that's honestly pretty lame it's not even a magic card so i just don't care i pick it up but i'm actually probably just gonna end up discarding it let's go ahead and uh oh, that guy doesn't even explore whoops i am already shoot i have to discard this and one other card which is really poor play there's really no reason for me to do that you know what i'm gonna do here hang on a sec uh oh wait 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 i can't even cast this i could waste sagacity yeah i'm just gonna waste sagacity i'm just gonna waste it I mean, it's better to um, recharge it than to um, just discard it because it was my weakest card. Eh, well, I guess my weakest card is really the quarter staff. I, you know, I could have discarded the quarter staff and the guide of the beyond, so that might have been a slight misplay. All right, so we're gonna evade the bandit. No need to fight it. We do have a crown of charisma, so we'll we'll go to this place that. Marissa really likes. This place is great. It's got barriers, which she's good at. Monsters, which she's good at. Um, it has a, this thing, which lets her make disable eight checks, which are almost auto successes to pick up any boon that she finds here. So it's just nice all around. All right, now that's, uh, that's a bitch and a half. So I do want to make this. I don't know whether to go for the... I guess I'm going to go for the dexterity disable 17 because I'm rolling 3d12 and I only need to hit an 11. I would have actually made it as a combat check. Oh, yeah, right. When I play blessings on my dexterity checks, I recharge the blessings. Sweet. So now, I don't know that she cares about weapons that much. So we could try to find a spell. Although, I don't know what really great spells are left at this point. I don't know if there's, like, another disintegrate ticking around in the box. There's more scrying, probably. Yeah, we'll just go for spell. Uh, though I think that seemed like an activated weapon. Maybe, like, the menu is offset. I'll experiment with that some more. All right, that's that's actually a nice one here. We can put the wyvern on the bottom of the deck. Perfect. And I'm going to pass here. And maybe I should have been a little bit more aggressive with exploring, but... Wow, cool. The henchman right on top. Well, that's fine. Because Lenny does have Inflict, and Harsk does have some more arrows in his quiver, so we should be able to beat this thing without too much trouble and close off the temple. All right, there's the inflict. Boop. And let's put out the dog. Let's fire a shot over the prow or whatever. Let's see, I need a 14 on these seven dice. It'd be a bit loose to roll here. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this orb of firestorm for a couple extra d4s. That ought to do her. Yep, that did her pretty good. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, that was an auto succeed. Didn't. I can't believe I still... Uh, this is a basic card here, this inflict. Like, this is how bad the situation is with divine cards. All right, so if I press weapon... Oh, what the... No! God damn it. 
did not really actually want to do that, uh, because last time I pressed spell and it made it do a weapon, so I thought, and the first time I tried to press a weapon, it didn't do anything, so I thought maybe I had to, like, you have to press one over, one to the right of what you really want to get what you want, but, nope, 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 alright, they're scrying, what is left for me to scry, I don't actually know, alright, I don't want to, I don't want to, use that location ability because I want to actually use my staff of minor healing all right luckily this is uh not the henchman and I really should have actually probably picked that thing up shit because that that was reveal it to reduce uh, elemental damage by four I'm, I'm an idiot I, I don't I just wasn't thinking and I just rolled and I really should have picked it up sending a blessing from someone else's hand because that's really effective in the final battle against the villain so losing that ring is unfortunate I could even consider um, going for items in my pickups when I kill Banes, getting items for my rewards. I could even consider that just. God damn it! Oh, come on! Oh my god. Oh, all right, well, we're not gonna close anything off. Uh, I'm gonna just run away to the temple again. I don't need this great club. I really don't need both great clubs here. We'll just evade. And that does mean that I undid the scrying there. But notice, it didn't, it's not like, um, I'm gonna scry the mountaintop again. It, she didn't go on top. No, 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 I scried here. I scried and she wasn't on top. And then after that, she was the freaking top. Okay, this is like the exact same thing. Well, not the exact because it's different monsters, but again, I scry, I find two monsters, I put them on the bottom. All right, I'm gonna have Linny go there because Linny has the Medusa mask in her hand. So if she encounters the villain, no big deal arena. She can just Medusa Mask and leave it on top. That's definitely what Linny's doing next. But it's not Linny's turn, it's Sila's turn. So, because Amiri had to waste her turn, your, her, your turn ends when you run away to the temple. She couldn't pull Sila away from here. So we're going to go to the rune well with Sila and just start plowing through some of these boons. Holy water, not the most effective thing at the moment. Alright, I'm going to just... Discard these blessings to keep exploring. Corrosive Storm, not good. Deals damage to everybody. Don't care about it. Don't want it. All right. Blessing of Yabba. You know what? Actually, that Holy Water is not bad. That is actually not bad because I believe Sila can actually use her uh, hero power with it for some healing at the end of this turn here. Just plowing through Flaming Mace plus one. Oh, I got this from the base set. I was like, oh, it's a Flaming Mace. Oh, and then I was like, wait, wait. This thing's actually garbage. Okay, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, sure, we'll just play it. I'm not going to stick around. Just see. All right, find traps. whoop de doo So we're going to just leave that there. Yep. Um, I don't care about recharging that. Maybe I should have flipped a card. I got lucky and picked it up anyway. Yeah, because now I can pop this holy water, bury it. Get some healing going. Minimum amount, just how I like it. Good. And then we're going to recharge away the armor. Alright, put that fine traps on the bottom, yup. I'm actually gonna discard this mace, it's junk. I'm gonna recharge this armor, try to get some more blessings. I really wanna uh, pick up some healing. Alright, Ezrin's up. So I'm really, I would like to find a monster with Ezrin to use that. Oh, Jesus! God, I hate this so much. At least two of my characters are on closed locations, so it doesn't really matter. But I can't use Bewilder against these assholes. Um, I don't expect to do that much fighting. We'll just pop a Lightning Bolt here and get her done. Maybe Scorching Ray could have done it as well. Gotta hate Zombie Horde. The thing about the Zombie Horde that you have to remember is all the zombies have to be defeated or else the barrier is not considered defeated. That's what's so annoying. Alright, so we recharge Lightning Bolt. And again, it's only characters that... Okay, I'm going to hit spell. It, it, it hit the weapon again. Good Jesus. Uh, all right. Well, let's have Mauricio fight it. So I can't evade this. I need to actually do this fighting here. I will recharge the Orb of Firestorm that I'm still holding on to for some reason. We're at the end here. I don't know if I really need to be saving that. All right, I'm going to... I don't want to press armor because... Okay, there we go. If I want to press spell, it really... See how it's holding red for spell? Okay, and I actually got a spell. Good. I could go for item, try to get one of those rings of resistance that Harsk foolishly got rid of. But we'll just leave it alone. 
All right, let's reveal that. Um, hmm, I need to roll a seven here. This is actually not enough. Swipe, sure, we'll do a swipe. Okay, now I need a four, that's much better. Would've gotten it, would've gotten it, but it's okay. Let's recharge, draw a card. Encanter, nope. Never lucky, always allies on the top. All right, there's a zombie minion and he chooses a card type. All right, can I do spell again? Yeah, let's do spells. I mean, the odds of getting a good spell are probably about as low as the odds of getting that ring. So maybe I should pop in some items here. I don't know. All right, let's flip up this falcon. Falchion. Falcon punch. Ooh, lost the weapon there. Bummer. And now it's almost an auto succeed for this zombie. That's the other thing I hate about this is it just takes so damn long to get through all these zombies. All right, so... The good news, I guess, is it does rack up a lot of loot for the end of the scenario. And I guess now I can discard this Pyromaniac Mage to keep exploring. I... I'm going to actually use Bewilder here. This is pretty cool. So you put it on the bottom of the deck, and then you can explore again right away, which is pretty sweet. So let's do that. And I got an Encanter. Can the Encanter be used to... Ooh, haste. Nice pickup. Can the Encanter explore again? I need to roll a four to recharge this. I'll take my chances. Uh, there's a there's a 25% chance I would have failed the recharge, but I feel like using the encanter to explore again would have been better. Strength. All right. Uh, obviously this is total garbage, but it is a free extra explore because I automatically pick it up. Bop. And demon armor, level six armor. Oh, add one d4 plus one on the fire magic traits to your combat checks. Combat or fire? Eh, it's not worth trying to get that d4. To get up to an 11, that's for sure. Okay, we'll do haste to explore again. And we got all the way up to the Warden of Runes. Perfect. Let's see what we can draw here. Ooh, all right, I'm up to nine cards, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get them I'm gonna get them used up, so I will draw this card here. So here's how we're gonna take out this Warden of Runes. Alright, first. We are going to fail this constitution check, so get things get things started on a high note here, that's for sure. Brap. I have to discard a card here. We're going to get rid of the quarterstaff, and it's obviously pretty crappy at this point. Now we've got to make this combat check. Can't use, can't use my lightning bolt, unfortunately, but I can use Scorching Ray. And then I can use the Staff of Hungry Shadows and discard this Worthless Strength to get an extra big old honkin' bonus. Wait, did I get a bonus? Oh yeah, I got a D8 plus 2. Perfect. And now I need to get a 15... Oh, I didn't discard for some reason. Discard. All right, we're going to reveal this. All right, so now I need to get a 13 on these four dice. I think one sniper shot from Hyar Horsk ought to do it. Yeah, so we're going to roll now. And that is a wrap. So let's draw a card. I'm at seven of nine. All right, tragically... Got an ally, and then there was an item underneath it. Staff of Hungry Shadows, really great card, especially, by the way, for the final scenario. It is an MVP card, so I hope I draw it soon in the next scenario. But first of all, let's go ahead and auto-close this place. And there we go. So what are we looking at here? I've closed how many locations? three locations so now if I find the villain I could temp close all the rest of the stuff uh, what do we got here we got a monster on the bottom okay I guess I'm just gonna try to I could have picked this up by the way but it's, it's just junk I guess I'm just gonna try to you know close as much as I can and then if things get really tight on time then we're gonna go ahead and try to corner the villain but so far I've spent 10 turns to close three locations pretty good hey, hey there's the sandpoint devil Oh, you devil, you. No, that's not what I want to do. Oh, God. No, 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 no. I want to evade. Evade. I don't want to make a pair of 20 combat checks for no reason whatsoever. All right. Linny now is going to go to the mountain top peak. The idea here being that if she's like Amiri, who spent her first two turns this game just bumping into the villain. 
Oh my god! I, some people have said, like, some people have said that it's bugged, that when you shuffle stuff, it always ends up on top. I am skeptical about that. I really, truly am, because, you know, we shuffled, and the villain didn't go on top. Because then when I scryed, it wasn't on the top. And only after scrying did it end up on top. So, I don't know. I think that's, that's, that's just random. Alright, Harks is just dicking around over here. And I'm going to hang on to my blessings because if, now that I know where the villain is and we can arrange for the clean kill, I, I think resources matter more than time. So we'll just leave that be. Amiri now, what does she do with herself? Uh, does she go here? Sure. Um, obviously, there's no monsters there for her to fight, but Sila made it through a bunch of this. There's only five cards left, so Amiri could very well find the uh, henchman. And we got Lucky picking up a Blessing Amiri can actually get automatically. It's a Junk Blessing, so we'll just discard it to explore again. Great Axe. That was quite the mighty item back in the day. Now it's probably just going to be Burial Fodder. I'm going to use Papa Xantas and actually get, like, guaranteed full... V oh! Full value from the healing! It's been a while since I've actually been able to do that. Then I guess we'll do the Staff of Minor Healing, go all the way. Let's do Bless... You know what? I'm not going to need this Norgorb or Gorb. Gor gor yeah, we'll just play that to explore again ah uh, that would have been nice actually but we'll let it go we'll let it be why don't you be you and i be me sort of thing and i will just stop here this is fine now i'm gonna actually use my hero power for the first time in this goddamn scenario and we're gonna go where we're gonna go to where harsk is because i believe that there was a junk loot or a junk boon on top here which Sila can now, yeah, whisk away. Perfection itself. All right, and I think, yeah, I think we'll just go here and just get there. All right, wow, this this is being, uh, this henchman's being very evasive. Let's pick up this holy candle. Why not? I'm mean, going to try to. I've got pretty good odds. Actually, overwhelmingly good odds. Might as well get a few free extra turns. I could also have buried it to my hero power and gotten some more healing, which would have been a reasonable option. All right, what is this? This is Nethys, all right. And we'll just pass the turn here. Uh, if um, I was more pressed for time, I would have maybe done a, done a blessing to explore and find that henchman, but as it is, I feel like it's worth it to just take it easy. All right, Ezrin, hmm. There's no really great place left for him to go, unfortunately. But what I can do is I can go here where Mauricio is, and then Mauricio on her turn can hand him the Crown of Charisma and go over to the Guard Tower. Tragically, this is not a magical item. Which of these... Alright, Ezrin's missing more cards. I guess we'll just banish it just to get rid of it. It's uh, not even all that likely to be wasted, and it wasn't. And can I use this to explore? Yep, so let's just keep on going. A little bit risky, of course, exploring before I pick up the Crown of Charisma from Mauricio. That's definitely a fact, but we got away with murder. So now Mauricio can hand off the crown. Go over here to be all by her lonesome self. And start this party. Hey, nice. All right, so we're going to fail this and lose a card. I think at this point the Masterwork tools are going to be pretty irrelevant, so we're going to get rid of those. Then we're going to recharge this dagger. And we're going to recharge... Uh, actually, I, mean, I, you know, I don't think I need El Sawari either. In fact, I'm going to just discard him. And we're going to recharge this. Now, is this good enough to do by herself, hitting a 13? Yeah, she's pretty self-sufficient kitten here. So we're going to kill the Warden of Runes. Pick, oh, what the hell, let's, let's flop an item. Let's flop some items in there. Hedge our bets on the roulette table, as it were. And now, um, we need just a little bit of help with the strength check. Oh, Amiri moved to, or used her uh, Torag that she found, perhaps prematurely. I don't know why Linny's lit up. It's one of the most annoying bugs when it lights up and you don't actually, don't actually need it. All right, now to hit a three on these 2d8s, Got a 62 out of 60, or a 63 to 64 chance of success. Seems pretty good. 
Now we got this banish a card to draw a random ally, like whoever wants to do that. All right, we'll go with the Revelation Quill. Thanks, thanks, that's important. Okay. All right, so Lenny will auto-succeed at this survival check. And let's take a look at what's going on here in this mountain peak. I don't want to cast Augury, because then if I don't find the Vellum, those two monsters on the bottom get shuffled. So I'm just going <laughs> to... Oh, wait, no! Oh my... oh, my God. Oh, my God, I'm an idiot. I did this last turn. I totally forgot that I already did that. All right, guys, we're going for it. We're going for it right here. A little bit flat-footed, uh, a little bit unprepared. I don't know if Lenny even has any combat spells. I mean, I would have liked Ezrin to be there, throwing down the Staff of Hungry Shadows. But we're doing it. Like, oh, wow, that was one of the worst, worst mental breakdowns I think I've ever had. Oh, God. Okay, so we're going to get that blessing of... Oh, man, we do not even have very much help in the form of blessings. Oh, brother. Oh, boy, this is going to be tough. Well... Well, that's what I signed up for, right? So I gotta just hit a d6. I, I need to save all these blessings for the combat check. So we're just gonna hope to hit a six on a d6, which is on three d6, which is not guaranteed. But we made it. If that had failed, I could have just had Lenny run away to the temple, but that would have been annoying. Oh god, I just forgot that I already Medusa masked last time. Shame on me. Shame. Okay, so can't play spells that have the attack trait. Oh right, unless I succeeded a thing. All right, well let's see how good Lenny is at doing this. She needs to hit an 8 on these cards. Damn! Oh, man. I don't have any blessings to spare. All these blessings can be used elsewhere. I guess we'll pop this, though. Because because that was a favor, so that could have been played alongside other blessings. But it's really, really important that Linny can use Holy Light for the second check. Okay. So now, um, Linny... What's going on here? Why does she have Combat 24, but she's got D6s? I don't understand what's going on here. Oh, because I played Holy Light. I don't want to play Holy Light right now, though. I want to uh, do something else first. Because there's two combat checks back-to-back, -back, and there's no one here to help Linny out. So we're going to go ahead and discard the dog to get D10s. Harsk, obviously, going to shoot that. And let's see. I'm going to shoot this right here, because I think that... um. It's when on on the next one she's gonna be using holy light, so she's gonna have a D twelve, and all the blessings will add D twelves. So I think it's more important for him to use his bow there than on the next combat check. Uh, Linny can reveal a cat, so that's all she's doing here for herself, unfortunately. Marisil, um, now this is a melee check, so we're gonna use the blessing of Gorm, and the next time we'll do the blessing of Lamashtu. All right, I think actually we're going to make this. I think we're going to make it, guys. I think it's going to be all right. So we're going to go ahead and try to play the Incendiary Cloud. Um, ooh, thank you, Clockwork Librarian MVP. Oh, I should have revealed my Robe of Runes, too. Perfect. All right, so we're going to do that. So we can play the Incendiary Cloud. And again, I think here's where it's more important to use the Charmed Red Dragon. So now... Why are all these D4s? She used Beast Form, guys. Oh, fuck. For fuck's sake. Um, why is she holding on to Scrying? That was definitely not in her hand. Anyway, she needs to roll a 13. And I feel like it can be done. Alright, you've got two blessings. Fucking hell, man. Alright, I need a 13 and I'm rolling... What is this? Four, eight, nine dice. Yeah, we're gonna make this first check. Stupid bugs. Alright, that was actually enough to make the second check, which is very encouraging. This, by the way, is for the Charmed Red Dragon. 1 in 12 chance that the dragon goes away. Uh, and we recharge Harsk's bow, which is fine. Okay, now we're going to use Holy Light. Silent Knight. We're going to go ahead and recharge the Ranger. Play that. We're just, I mean, we're playing everything. This, this is it for all the marbles. Once we get this, I don't know why Ezrin's lit up. Once we get this, we win. And a blessing of Gorum. Rip. Bop a lula. Bawap dang do. Yeah. Uh, so it worked out. And I guess it was actually a pretty safe, pretty safe villain to kill. I just surprised myself a little bit. Didn't actually mean to do it. But thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like and or subscribe. And I'll see you again soon with the final scenario. Of course, if you uh, want to stick around to see me do the after party, go ahead and stick around. Very curious how this is going to work now with all these things. Oh, it just shows everything. All right. Junk, junk, junk. Kind of okay, junk, junk. Ooh, Sign of Wrath may be good.
All right, let's take a look. What's this? This is the, the loot card here. So strength or melee skill plus five. You may discard it for another 2d6. You have to be weapon proficient. And if, it's, if you're using it against the final boss, it's banished. Now, the second part of it is very nifty. You can attempt an intelligence or charisma 10 check, and if you succeed, you heal. And it's just a reveal, so you can keep doing that. Now, obviously, you have to make a charisma 10 check or an intelligence 10 check. Ezrin has a d12 plus 6 intelligence, and then if he has his robe of runes, you can reveal that to get d12 plus 8. So there's still a 1 in 10 chance of failing, but it's almost like a, an endless healing for Ezrin if, if you give it to him. As a melee weapon, it's actually kind of weak. I mean, you're really just giving plus 5. That's like the equivalent of uh, 2d4, honestly. So it's actually not that great as a weapon. It's better as like a healing card. So I am probably going to give it to Ezrin just in case he ever needs a bunch of healing, which he might actually in the in the next scenario. And then we got a bunch of short spears. No, oh, where's where's the spells? We did get some spells. So restoration is is good. Sign of wrath. What do we got here? Ooh. Oh, each other character at your location is dealt one force damage, and if you fail that check against a monster, you can evade it. Oh, that's pretty cool. So yeah, we'll be using that. I think. Just make sure you're alone. Or with someone who can resist force damage, like a Miri. But all right, let's not get ahead of ourselves. So first things first, uh, I don't want the Great Axe. Do I want Short Spear plus three? Nope. Do I want Venomous Dart plus two? Uh, maybe, but obviously not a Miri. I don't want the Sword of Greed. So yeah, that's that. We got an extra Blessing Torag, okay. Sila has the Flaming Mace and Holy Water and an extra Blessing. So that's done. Ezra just has a couple extra items. I don't want that. I don't want that. Um, I'm going to give back Marizial her crown of charisma. Wait a minute. It's diplomacy. It doesn't work on charisma. I don't know if we actually need the crown of charisma anymore. In the final scenario, we're not going to need charisma checks for anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, give Marizial the orb of storms. Just And it'll be a one-use thing. She won't be able to recharge it, but I mean, might as well. Linny has an extra spell. It's the scrying that she stole from Ezrin, and Ezrin does not want that strength, of course. So we get scrying back here. You want as much scrying as humanly possible. If I could get rid of some of those spells and like pick more auguries and scryings, I totally would. Sign of Wrath. Well, I guess we'll finally get rid of that inflict, eh? How about it, boys? And, uh, yeah. Oh, wait. Fiery Weapon is here? Mother freaking... God, her deck is terrible. Shit, and agility is here? Jesus Christ, I guess we'll take restoration. All right, so that's good. Horse is good. Okay, let's go to view all, make sure we haven't forgotten anything. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, wait, I want I want that. Yes, yes, I want to get rid of this quarterstaff plus two and take this potential healing card. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Linny can also maybe do it. I mean, she doesn't have a weapon slot in, in my party, but... She's another person who has a decent shot at it. All right, thanks for watching. I hope to see you again real soon.